Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. Sorry I'm a bit late. Um, I had some computer trouble. But everything's alright now. Everything's fixed now and everything's okay now. Um... Today's sermon is called Praise Like Perfume. Um, have you ever gotten into an elevator with someone that is wearing really strong perfume and it spreads um, to everywhere and you're like, what the heck is this? And sometimes it's like very not good smelling perfume. I'm not a huge perfume wearer, but I, I did, um, I, I do love this one perfume. It comes in a pink bottle. It's by Lancome, and it's, it's from, uh, the lady I first, um, D discovered wearing it was one of my former first ladies um, of my church, of the church I used to attend, and I said, that's really nice, and she got it for me, and that one perfume, I wore it everywhere, I wore it every night to Bible, every week to Bible study, it was just so wonderful, and I was like, this is so good. So when somebody's wearing perfume, you can really just, you first of all, you can smell it, and depending on the perfume, you either have a bad reaction to it, or a, or a pleasant reaction to it. And I find sometimes with because I like great smelling hand soaps as well. Um, and the ladies that work with me say, Wow, you always buy um, nice smelling hand soaps. Uh, and I, because they wash your hands all the time. And I love sweet smelling stuff. And I was listening to, um, from Sailor. I was listening to, um, for, for Your Love on, For Your Love on Me. And, um, in that song, it says, If praise is like perfume, I'll lavish mine on you. And, the the phrase praise like perfume uh, stuck with me it was just it was st something that really stuck with me and he said he said let praise the lord said for me to tell you is let praise be like perfume let your praise like spread to everywhere and by this he doesn't mean start start singing and speaking in tongues everywhere but let the spirit of praise go with you everywhere when you are about to complain praise when you're about to feel disgruntled in traffic because somebody cut you off praise when you're about to like just fall apart praise because your praise will open doors that your pl your complaints won't uh complaints are just air and disgruntled and being negative is just um like it like you're blowing hot air um but praise is the fuse and worship is the match so if you start off with praise just saying 
Ah, uh, thank you, Lord, for just just for being God and just for being who you are. That will change your whole day. So today, let your words be few and let your praise be like perfume. Sometimes we get so caught up in what is supposed to be happening in life, we forget that who who is in control of our lives. We get so afraid and so caught up in in what's going on, we forget that God is still in control. And your praise will will sell, settle you. At least it does for me. Praise always uh, settles me. And it's really amazing how like, one word of praise will just make your day, like, complete. Because sometimes when I'm feeling disgruntled or whatever, um, praise and prayer really just stir, stir me to thankfulness and gratefulness. Um, some, sometimes people... Um, say they're not a morning person or whatever, but I'm I, I, I'm of the opinion that that um, if praise becomes your lifestyle, you become a whatever person. You become a morning person. You you become an evening person because praise lifts the heavy burden. Whatever stress stressing you out, whatever is you're dealing with, just a thank you, Lord, just, um, just a your worthy God, just, it just helps lift the heavy bands, and somebody today under the sounds of, under the sound of my voice needs that band lifted, and the Lord says, Praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. So, like perfume, praise um, comes in many forms. Like you have uh, Calvin Klein perfume, you have Lancome perfume, like I was saying. You have many brands of perfume. And, and there are there are many brands of, of praise too. There is um, the th thank you, Lord, and there is all kinds of ways to praise. You don't you don't even have to lift your hands when sometimes when I'm in the store. And I'm just feeling like I'm so overwhelmed and whatever. Sometimes in my heart when the person's helping me get my groceries or get my, get some things from the store, I like um, I'm singing I'm singing stuff like you made a way. When my back was against the wall, and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. I'm, and I'm standing here only because you made a way. And you build mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power, perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible, and we're standing here. Only because you made a way. And, like, and the atmosphere begins to change. Um, I remember one time I was having 
real financial difficulty, and that's what I did. I was in the grocery store feeling bored. How am I going to get through this month? I don't know. And then this song came to my heart, and I just started to sing it. And, you know, the situation didn't change, but my perspective changed. And the thing about perfume is you put a little dab on, and it spreads to your whole body. And not only sometimes to your whole body, but it spreads to the people around you. So maybe one of the solutions to your relationship problems is praise, to, to spray a little praise with, with your, to start your day. And it doesn't have to be anything big. It can be, thank you, Lord. It can be your good God. And it doesn't even have to be up. Out loud, it can be, it can be in your quiet moments, in your quiet place. I can seriously feel uh, God calling for praise today, and He's saying praises like perfume. Put a like with perfume. You don't need to put a lot for it to spread. You just, uh, my dad, my dad, what he used to do is spread a little bit on, uh, my neck and a little bit here, a little bit there, and it would just, and it would just go forward. I would be smelling good all day. And, you know, like, even just a little, li a little praise. It will spread through your entire body. It will spread through your entire family. It will spread. And, like, maybe one of the solutions to your family problem problems is to praise together. Not just as a, um, a ritual you do because you want your kids to, you know, love God or whatever. Um, or to do it in their lives, but as a lifestyle to teach them how to uh, defeat the devil. And I, for one, have, have been a living witness that praise can, can not always change the situation, but it will always change the atmosphere. It will always change an atmosphere. And and praise doesn't have to be loud, like in church, but praise can be quiet. Praise can be in your, in the grocery store, like I said, or sometimes even when, when uh, um, the, the ladies where I live are getting me ready for bed, I'm saying, Thank you, Lord, and thank you, Lord, and thank you for this day, God, and I'm beginning to praise and worship. So, praise has to become a habitual lifestyle. It cannot just be something you do in church. It has to be something you do daily, every day. Um... God is calling for the church to rise in a lifestyle of praise and worship. Praise is like um, the fuse, and worship is the match. Um, praise is like you're you're praising God. You're you're extolling him. You're extolling him. You're saying, "God, you're so good." But worship goes a lot deeper than that. Worship means you're you're ascribing not only the attributes of God, but you're ascribing worth to Him. 
uh, when we say God, you're worthy, we mean you mean you you're worthy. Like he's just uh, awesome and worthy, and we're we're ascribing glory to God. That's why praise and worship is so important. It's two different things, and praise. Um, praise is also, um, the starter while worship drives the car. That's why often in, mo in most churches I've been to, praise and worship come before the preaching. Because when we get, get together and praise and worship, it's the vehicle for the word to come forth. That's why often praise and worship comes first, because when when the people set set the atmosphere of praise and of worship, it makes when the word comes forth uh, from the Lord through the man or woman of God, it it that atmosphere that was set allows it. I believe to penetrate. Um, for me, you can For me, I know we call them worship leaders or praise leaders, but um, I know we say a worship team or whatever. But I think um, praise and worship is basically to set an atmosphere for healing, so that. That sweet smelling saber, as the Bible calls it, can spread to every situation, and I'm and I'm of the belief that people can actually get healed through worship. Uh, people can actually be restored through worship because worship um, taught right sets. And that atmosphere and goes down deep to where people are hurting, people are mourning. That's why certain songs uh, make people cry, minister minister to people, because uh, 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 it's healing. The ministry of music is healing. Um, worship is not a musical activity. You don't have to be able to sing to worship. That's a misnomer that we've taught the church. Uh, that worship is a song. No. No. A song can be a vehicle for worship. A song in itself is not worship. Songs are only vehicles for worship. Um... Like you get in your vehicle and you drive, but worship is actually ascribing worth to God, and and praise is actually praising God. So when you praise someone, you're like, oh my gosh, Rachel, you did that so well! What a wonderful sermon. That's praise, and and when you say Rachel, like um, that was worth everything to me. It's ascribing value to what to what he's done. So. So praise is telling you how wonderful he is and, and how grateful you are. And worship is ascribing value to what he's done. Um, I think that we've, we've done a disservice in the church by telling people worship is a song. No, it isn't. Uh... Worship songs are vehicles for worship. A, a song is not worship in itself. Worship is 
when you tell God when you tell God how good he is and when you ascribe worth to him that that's worth worship that's what it is songs are vehicles to do that but it's not real worship and I'm the Lord the Lord is really wanting worship to arise and um so create create an atmosphere of worship in your home today um create an altar of worship a place where you can lay everything down even a room or a space in your house or a that you can lay everything down on your on your own personal altar and give it as a sacrifice to God. Give your praise as a sacrifice to God. Give your worship as a sacrifice to God. Um, because real worship and real praise take something out of you. After worship, um, you should feel like something has changed in you. Either something is changing in you, something has changed in you, or you should feel a sense of that something will change within you because worship changes atmospheres. That's what worship does. That's what uh, praise does. It it changes atmospheres and it creates intimacy with you and God. Into me, you see, in worship, God allows you to see into Him, and He sees into you. Worship is not just hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worship is God's time to re... God sees into you all the time, but I think it intensifies in worship. And that's why in worship, the ideas are created. Things are born because intimacy creates... Uh, and non-intimacy kills. So, you're wondering why you feel dead inside? Maybe your worship life needs some attention. We talk about our, our um, spiritual life. We talk about our prayer life. We talk about reading the Bible or word life. But I hear rare, rarely people talk about their worship life. Maybe, maybe the reason why things are not being created in your life or things are stagnant in your life um, is because worship is lacking. The Lord is calling right now for worship to rise. The Lord is calling for praise to rise. Um, the Lord is calling for churches to come back to true worship, not singing. Singing is a different thing. It's a vehicle, but it's not worship in itself. Poetry could be worship. Um, any kind of artistry can be worship. Um, worship is not a song. Worship is a condition of your heart. And it is a lifestyle. You, you have to create a lifestyle of worship. If it's not a lifestyle, and something you do um, in your daily life. 
Um, it just becomes a, a ritual of something you do on Sundays. And the Lord wants worship to go past Sunday. Uh, Kim Walker Smith says something awesome. He, she said, you should come to church um, being worshipped, having worshipped all week. So when you come together, if I've been worshipping all week, and you have been worshipping all week, when we come together, it's it creates an even greater atmosphere because we both created atmospheres in our home. But if I'm worshiping and you're not, and you have to get pumped up by a worship leader, no wonder why we can't get anywhere. Because if, if the tire inflates every week and we have to spend time pumping it up, pumping it up, and when it gets there, we just we just say, "Oh, we have to leave now." It's it's not going to get anywhere. We it's time for the church to experience true worship. I believe the Lord wants to do something unprecedented in this season. And when I say unprecedented, I mean unprecedented. I mean stuff he has stuff he's never done before in history stuff he never did before in the bible what the lord wants to do is unprecedented like like he's never done it before anywhere like you you can't find a, a scripture for what god wants to do he wants to do something new he says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. But he's so busy. Um, we're so busy pumping people up, trying to get them to worship. That, like, by the time the tire is full, we, need, we, we think we need to move on. But the Lord just wants... Um, wants true worship and he wants church church to be about him and we say it is but really it's um i think it can be sometimes about our schedule and what we want to do i know it's important to plan but your plans uh have to have to um, take God into account. He has to be your plan. So if if the worship is going on and the Lord is moving, there is there is nothing that anybody needs to say. If the Lord is moving and worship is going on, and you feel that worship should be going on. Let it be, because people are just, people are being healed, people are being restored, and there is nothing that any pastor needs to say that comes before what God is doing. I think, I think the problem is we, we like re regimented, we like to know what's going, what's going to be coming next. We like to know two songs, and then we, you know, then we're off to the sermon. Two slow songs, two fast songs, sermon, and then we go home. But the Lord wants to break that cycle. He wants to bring a new form of worship. I don't know what is what is going on, but I sense the Lord wanting to bring a new form of worship, a new a, a new kind of attitude into the church, but we're so res, res, regimented with what we do that we're missing what God wants to do because we're so afraid 
to let to let him go because we're afraid of what's going to happen. But we have to understand that the like what what he wants to do is past what we what we know and what we think. And you know, uh, we're we're afraid, you know, that people will leave our church or not watch online or oh people will just start dropping off. But I have something to say to every pastor out there. The remnant will stay. I'll say that again. The remnant will stay, and there is a remnant that um, that the Lord is using in the church, and they may not be people that you know. They may, may just be volunteers to your church or greeters, but they're the people that the Lord is using, not, not the big pastor so-and-so or bishops so and so um so don't worry if people leave and you adopt this style of letting god have his way and people are like oh my god uh, this is crazy um because keep in mind brother sister god is not the author of confusion he will, he will never sanction confusion. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about people leaving because the remnant will stay. And people that need to hear what's coming from your church pulpit will hear it. I was talking to a friend uh, the other day, and I said to her, um, people will stay. The people that need to see you will see you. I, I I said, the people that need to see you will see you. The people that need to share your sermon will share it. The people that need to hear you will hear you. Uh, y y you don't need to pump and push and all of that because... People, the, the thing with people is, people know what's good ground when they hear it, when they see it, when they smell it. People know what speaks to them, and if it speaks to them, they will share it with their friends. Like the perfume I was talking about before. Um, sometimes I say... If you want to share this, share it or whatever. But usually I don't. Because I believe people know what speaks to them when they hear it. And I don't need to tell you to share this. Because if it touches you and you want to share it, you'll share it. Um, and if it speaks to you or... You know a friend that could use it, you'll share it. I don't need to say anything. And if the Lord is speaking to you about sharing this or any of my sermons, you know that you could hit that share button. I don't need to say anything. Because I don't, I don't need to push and prod people to share my, to share whatever. Because to share my sermons or anything on my channel because they know what's a good word when they hear it and if the turnout's a little low sometimes okay that's that's what it is i i don't need to care about that my main responsibility is to get out what the lord has put in me whether you share it or whether you don't is is Frankly, none of my concern. <laughs> it's his concern. All my concern is, is that I do it uh, correctly. I hear what he's saying, and I, and I um, 
convey it correctly and accurate, accurately and with pre precision. Sometimes when he tells me to, I will say, I will put a special emphasis on sharing the experience. But for me, I don't, I don't feel I need to because whoever's hearing this will hear it and will take what they need to from it. And we'll share it if they need to, or we'll, we'll tell their friends about it. I don't need to do that. That's not my job. My, that's God's job. He does, I do the watering, and he does the drawing. I don't need to worry about anything like that. All I need to do is to preach the word, and that's it. And if I'm, if I'm sure in my heart that this is the word that God has given me, whether you agree with me or not, that's, that's, that's the word that God, God has given me. And if God has given you something different, that's the word that God has given you. There are too many people um, just um, trying to hustle and whatever. You don't need to hustle anything. If your calling is from God, He will do the drawing. He will um, bring the right people to your podcast. He will... He will... Um, cause the right people to hear your sermons or come to your church. You don't need to do the drug. I'm not saying you don't need to put in the work you do, but when it comes to, um, when it comes to, uh, sharing, uh, or t talking to people about your business or what the Lord has put in you, let him do the drawing. Um, you've been hustling too hard. And the Lord's saying, ease up a bit. Let me do the drawing. Let me take over your ministry. Let me take over that business. This doesn't only go for ministry. It goes for business as well. And the Lord's saying, you've been hustling too hard. Not that you don't have to put in the work you you honestly do, and you need to do it with excellence. But you don't need to hustle, hustle, hustle. Those people that need your business will come to it. You've been holding on too tight. Remember, it's not yours, it's his. And let your worship be like perfume today, spreading throughout your whole family and your whole community. I just imagine from my last point, if everyone would start worshiping, where would we be as a community, as a city, as a nation, as a world? We need today, I seriously believe, worship to rise. Thank you, Lord, for letting, for your word today. Thank you for your admonishment about worship and, and to stop hustling and just, just to let people, uh, let the ministry or let the business be what it is and, let you take control. Thank you, Lord, today for giving us permission to let go. Stand up in our lives. and Stand up in our ministry. Stand up in our business. And show off and, sh and show forth your glory, God. We worship you. We love you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.
down, down and worship Him. The Lord says there's somebody under the sound of my voice that's struggling in their marriage. And the Lord says, worship together. Instead of fighting together, worship together. There's somebody that's struggling with their family and their family. Worship together. Come together and worship. Even if it's for 10 minutes a day, just to say, thank you, God. Come together and worship. Because that worship will heal things. And I said before, worship creates things. And worship will restore your family. Worship will restore your marriage. Worship will restore your kids. And it may not change the situation right away. But it, it will change. The first step to changing any situation is changing your perspective. And that's what worship does. If you change how you see it, you will change how you deal with it. And it, it will eventually, slowly, through process, change the whole situation. Yes, th thank you, Father, for that word. Thank you. Bow down and worship Him. Worship Him. Oh, worship Him. Bow down and worship Him. Enter. Oh. And he wants me to remind you that worship, um, he is a consuming fire, which, mean, which means he consumes everything. He takes it and works with it. It's like a twister. He'll take it up in the air, but he'll work with it to create something wonderful. If you look at a potter's wheel, and how the potter molds the clay. Um, sometimes um, it it's molded in your hand in the potter's hand. But like sometimes, like with the wheel, it kind of looks like a twister. It looks like it's spinning and spinning out of control. But he's making something with it. With your worship, your problems look like they're spinning and spinning out of control. But he's making something with it. He's working with it. The potter is crafting on the wheel. He's working with it. He's, he's, it may look like it's spinning, spinning, spinning. But that spinning is allowing him to work with it. And it's gonna turn out to be something so beautiful that you that you have never dreamed of. More beautiful than you've ever dreamed of. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.